what is the class like at the University of Austin, the Forbidden Classes? It's a class where diverse views, actually people who hold different opinions are presented about topics we wouldn't or couldn't or shouldn't even talk about. If you have a sincere question, you're welcome to ask that, even if some people may be offended by that question. So the University of Austin was founded a little over a year ago. This is a very ambitious enterprise. We're trying to build something from scratch, but we're well on a way to doing it. We have some of the best faculty members in the world. We have some of the best advisors in the world. We're well on the way. I mean, just think about it. In a little over a year, we've secured well over $100 million. That alone is a remarkable accomplishment. You're going up against a system of accreditation, for example, in which there are built-in mechanisms within that system to make it incredible incredibly difficult as a deterrent for new institutions. The University of Austin came into being as a result of the ideological capture of American universities. And it was a particular ideology promulgated by people on the far left. Uh, it's Sometimes it's called woke ideology. Sometimes it's called social justice with an uppercase S, uppercase J. A number of donors who have donated over a million dollars or a million dollars or, or above. And there are a lot of reasons for this. They're hopeful, they're enthusiastic. They're also just sick of it. And they realize that this is not just an, an issue. What happens in the classroom doesn't stay in the classroom. This is an issue of global competitiveness. This is an issue of how we're gonna face China because I can guarantee you China is not straying from the meritocracy. You know, they have the Gaokao exam with whatever you think about it that's given every year. It's a meritocratic exam. Uh, we are trafficking in absolute madness for which propositions for which the evidence contradicts our economic competitors are not doing this i can assure you so for the donors this is not just a matter of oh let's give people a, an alternative to a broken educational system and help them live live better lives there are larger economic issues at play as well the university of austin is not a conservative or a right-wing university the solution which the, the president of the University of Austin has said repeatedly, Pano Canulis, the, the solution to left wing, or in this case, far left wing ideological capture of our institutions is not a right wing institution. It's a truth seeking university. It has a significant portion of land that it's been given. Um, it's managed to recruit some of the, the world's leading faculty like Kathleen Stock and Richard Dawkins is on the board of advisors. Neil Ferguson, uh, the famous um, historian from the UK. Last year it had its first forbidden classes of program in which we took students from all over the country. We offered a range of courses that in, in debates, we had a debate, for example, about gender ideology from Deidre McCluskey, uh, who is the famous economist who's trans, and Kathleen Stock, who is um, fighting trans ideology, not trans people. There's a big difference. So we've had a, a we have a range of faculty, we have a range of debates, we've had a range of uh, conversations that simply cannot be found in the modern university. After the classes, people would come up and engage me constantly i i was <laughs> i spent two weeks there last summer but they wanted to have spirited conversations about you know i would say one thing like i personally believe that there are moral facts and so we spent hours and hours in in, in, in on, on the bus in the classrooms talking about whether or not they're moral facts and what that means and you know i felt genuinely challenged like genuinely like wow the, these are some thoughtful people the overwhelming majority of the students who select these programs, they come from elite universities and they're at the top of their field. And, and the other thing that's amazing to me is the sheer diversity of students that they've had. They've had evangelical Christians, they've had ardent atheists, they've had people from all over the political spectrum, people who hold different moral beliefs. Uh, it's race blind, race will not play any factor, it's merit. And what's, here's the other thing that's interesting about that. Even though the, the applications were race blind, we had a mix of everybody. Classes, for the Forbidden Classes program are held in person. They're held in Dallas. Harlan Crow is the, uh, and, and Kathy Crow, uh, generously donated classroom space for this. This summer again, 
we're going to have the next set of forbidden courses programs with new faculty and new students. I think that the TAs for this next year will be drawn from the students who graduated last year, which is really an I interesting thing as well, so they can um, relive that experience with a new crop of students. One, it's to prepare for the big opening, which is 2024. It's to find the best faculty members. So there's a lot of stuff to figure out. Should we require SATs, ACTs? Should there be grades? Should like read college? Maybe those grades are not A, B, C, D, but or alphanumeric or what have you, but they're essays about each student's performance. Should there be a comprehensive exam? Should faculty have tenure? What kind of administrative support should we have? Should there be even things like gym facilities? You know, should there be something more than a basketball hoop? So you're, you're talking about laying the infrastructure, the scholastic educational and physical infrastructure for a massive project, a groundbreaking project in which the goal is to not only rival, but to surpass the Ivies. The first classes will be on ground and they'll be in 2024. That would be the first class of students.